Sky, who is running the floor, the 5'11 graduate, along with David Azor, Pedro Castro, Shamar Wilson, and Patrick Wamba. As for UC Santa Barbara, A.J. Mitchell with the ball. It's his first start as a gaucho, along with Ajari Sini, Miles Norris, Josh Pierre-Louis with the slam right there. And Amadou So, who rounds out this lineup. Hot start for the Gauchos. Very nice pass from uh, Sinai into uh, John Louis, who Josh is a, a real good jumper. He, yeah. We don't have to say much more than that. An explosive player. So early on, Gauchos knotted up here. UT Arlington, this is a tough team. Much tougher than many of the other opponents that the Gauchos have played. But there's a back door for Sunni, just can't bank it off the glass. Coming in for the rebound, that's Wamba. And here is Levi who runs the floor. Levi's a good one. He's quick and active. He's, he's a good defender. Although small, he is extremely fast. It was Mitchell who came away with the block here in the Gauchos. Mitchell at the control, surveying the floor. Louis looking inside. There's So, a kiss off the glass. He'll bank it home. Real nice move by Amadou So to get around his, uh, his defense to the left side as he goes to the hoop. So, with just under 21 points per game, that's the 19th best mark in the country. Here's Levi, left wing. Good pass. Vinovich calling. A bobble there, turnaround look from Wilson, and he rattles it home. Now the referees tonight, Frank Harvey the third, your head referee, Bill Vinovich, football fans, you know him, and John Paul Guerrero also on the floor calling the shots. Sonny looking for Mitchell, he's coming off 10 assists in a win last week. So driving the lane, contact called, whistle on the floor, this goes against Arlington. A.J. Mitchell's first start as a gaucho, and uh, he's had a lot of minutes, but hasn't started yet. And this is a, a good one for him because the guy he's guarding is their very best player on, on the floor. Um, that's Javon Levy. Yeah, Levi is nationally ranked in three categories in terms of his career numbers. He's third in the country in assists, he's fifth in steals, and he's sixth in assist to turnover ratio. But there's So looking to get the best of Akabundu Igioku, and he does so with four early. Why well, Levi is so extremely quick, and that makes him explosive, and a uh, tough uh, guard for uh, A.J. Mitchell tonight. Now, the, the battle in the post, coach, it's Kayla Ritchie, Akabundu, and Kiyoku, who is 19th in the country in blocks per game. This is a really good team in terms of their rejections. He's facing Amadou So tonight. That bully ball battle at the block. Whistleblown, yes. yeah, that travel called against UTA around the perimeter. You can always pick up a fumble, so it's okay to pick it up. It's not traveling, but then he didn't establish a pivot foot and took two steps. So um, fans that are watching would wonder why that was a travel, but he traveled after he picked up his uh, fumble. So Mitchell across the midline, Levi is guarding him. They're looking to get the ball into so early, but Sini with the 12-footer the just can't hit. Wide open shot, good shot, good selection. Here's the drive, the dump off. Akabundu and Kyoku with the slam. I'm just going to call him OK. Is that fine? <laughs> How about KO, coach? He's oh, a knockout. OK, KO. He knocked me out. <laughs> uh -oh. That ball thrown away. Miscue from Sunni. The turnover against the Gauchos. It'll be UTA basketball. Knotted up early on. That was a real nice pass down here in for the dunk. Uh, he was under control, stopped, and made a very nice pass in the last bucket by uh, UTA. Here come the Mavericks, Levi at the controls. Swing down to the post, Akiyoku goes up. Pierre-Louis le left his feet, he was looking for Norris who found So into the block, they get it to roll in. So was six early out of the eight that the Gauchos have scored. 
He's getting the ball in there deep, and he's really tough to stop when he gets it that close to the hoop. Looking at the block, they'll swing it right back out up top. Corner three ball off the mark. Here's Mitchell with the rebound up to Sani. Contact, but no whistle blown. Here come the Mavs. Azor driving the lane, tries to kick it out. They got a hand on it. They'll reset. Wamba working on Sani. Yep. Arm contact, put his forearm into him. With the check, we'll head to the break. It's a tight one early on through the first four minutes. It's Big West Conference Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. in the Thunderdome, you see Santa Barbara up by just a possession over UT Arlington early on in the first half. And I feel like this one's gonna be a shootout, Coach. It seems like these two teams evenly matched and you see explosive basketball on each side of the court. Yeah, it's gonna be a close game. I think both teams are putting on their, uh, what they do and I like the way UT a plays, they move the ball, they're disciplined. They missed that lob or it would be eight to eight right now. So Levi in no man's land. He's working against Mitchell. They push it in for Wamba. Backdoor Azor couldn't lay it home. Ooh. That was that was close. Uh, Walk me through it, coach. Now, that was a quick call on the jump ball. I think he didn't want either player shaking each other loose. That was Awfully quick jump ball. Uh, he didn't really have uh, his hands on it. But hey, where he was standing, it looked like he did. He had his back to him. Azor against Pierre Louis. Turnaround jumper. Kyoto Ritchie. Skied for it. He got his hand on it. Boy, can that kid jump. Kyoto Ritchie, Ekabundu, Ehioku. He's got tremendous explosive hops. And he tipped it back to his uh, to his team, but of course it was tipped out of bounds. You know, we've, we've seen that Good a play. few times tonight, Coach, where he's getting his hand on the ball that's over the rim. He's the first one to touch it. Yeah, they're a very athletic team, and this uh, is just good for the Gauchos to play an athletic team just like the Big West teams that they play. So he's 66% from the perimeter. Here's Mitchell driving the lane. Oh man, tough go. So there for the putback. So good rebound. Good drive by Mitchell. You just didn't have the shot at the end. So with eight, he's four of four from the field. Swing into the corner. Three ball Castro. Got it. Three ball Castro. He's a good one. Castro's a good player. He's he's tall, he's quick, and he can shoot. Pedro Castro answers right back. Now Calvin Wisher. You see Mitchell and Wisher, they're somewhat interchangeable players, both new to this team. Idehan trying to go up strong. That ball tipped away by So. It looks like early on, these referees are letting both teams play. Yep. Just as we say that, foul called. This one goes against UTA. Let's take another look at it here. That was a push from Montez Young Jr. who's called for the foul. Gauchos to inbound baseline. It's A.J. Mitchell. They find Wishart around the perimeter. He loses it and... He does throw it away. Here comes Levi and the Mavericks. Swings out to Castro. One more pass. They reset. Good transition defense. Wamba works right. Now pulls it back for Levi. That's a three ball, and it's good. Patrick Wamba nails the triple, and UTA out in front. Good action there on offense by the Texas team. They they moved it from side to side and got a good screen and roll on that weak side. 
And the eye test just tells you, maybe other than Washington State, this is the toughest team that UC Santa Barbara has faced all season. We mentioned UT Arlington. They've been playing tournament teams all season long. Six of their seven matchups have been against NCAA tournament teams that were in the dance last year. UTA, they, they've had a tough record early on, but, you know, head coach Greg Young, he knows that his team is capable of so much more. Well, the schedule will help them as they go. Here's Miles, uh, four apiece now. Yeah, Carson Bischoff whistled for it. Bischoff had back surgery just about two weeks ago. A week later, cleared to play. He nailed three triples from downtown against Utah State in his return. This is his second game of the year. Wishart with 12 to shoot. Norris has an open look. Edehan skies to the board, draws contact in the foul. Two shots coming for Robinson Edehan. It's a scramble in there deep. Both teams have guys that can jump and that are quick off the floor. So this is going to be a good battle on the, on the boards. Edehan, a 60% free throw shooter. He went five for six last week. And he knocks down the first here. Five fouls now on uh, UTA, only one on the Gauchos. So we day and he skied in for the board right there. This is a UC Santa Barbara team that's seventh in the country in rebounds per game. We day had a big reason for it. They're averaging about 45 boards per contest. And Idehan is just a monster when it comes to post play. Him along with Miles Norris and Amadou So make up that front court in the rotation. Here's Hoiberg. A little split action out in front off the high post. Hoiberg working middle, he lobs it up. And a block for Idehan is 10th of the season. Here come the Gauchos, Wisher. Sani almost loses it and does. Wamba the other way. Foul called, offensive. Wishart plants the feet and draws the foul. Good play by, uh, by Cal because he was back by himself, but not a good pass at the other end by Cal. He threw a long wind-up type pass, kind of gave it away with his wind-up. We call it telegraphing the pass. So when you make a, a you know, you, you convert on a turnover on one end, best thing you can do, you gotta get back, play that transition defense. He's able to get in front of the driving offender right there for UTA and draw the foul. Yeah, that was a good play to get the ball back. Norris. And an offensive Ooh. foul on the other end. This time it was Shamar Wilson who drew it. He was standing there. Anytime you get you get in the air, you have to acknowledge the people in front of you, and otherwise it is an offensive foul. May go into the game for the first time for the Gauchos. Here comes Hoiberg running the floor. The graduate out of Michigan State finds Young Jr. That's the third straight possession with an offensive foul. Ball heads back to the Gauchos. As we have said every week, it's it's the uh, the emphasis on that play is to watch for the movement of the screener and and the big guys. If they get there too late, they move a little bit. If they get there early enough, it's a combination of the driver and the guy setting the screen. Santa Barbara without a field goal over the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Anderson pulls up, couldn't hit. Good shot, good open shot. Here's Castro working on Anderson, right back up to Hoiberg at the logo. Screen and roll, fight it. And they set good screens and their passers uh, react real well to the defense. That's a fadeaway look. 
Makabundu Ehioku comes away with his own miss. Long three, Hoiberg falls just short. Ehioku slams it home. Keota Richie Akabundu Ehioku will be a problem in this one if they can't put a body on him. You saw Idehan getting up off the bench. Yeah, he's 6'9 and, uh, and very, very active. So, with the putback opportunity, can't knock it down. Norris tried to tip it back to him. Here's Levi looking to put UTA up by a pair of possessions. Castro driving on the lane. Floater, teardrop, gets it to fall home. <laughs> Levi is playing smothering off-ball defense on Ajari Sani. Whistle blown here. See what the call is. Looks like it's going against UT Arlington. That is Keita Ritchie Akabundu Ehioku whistled for the foul. Is it okay if I just call him KO? Yeah, KO okay. is KO. it. But KO, that is his second foul of the game early on. And, you know, it's interesting, Coach. We've, we've seen Amadou So and Robinson E. Dayhan. They've made their way through Santa Barbara basketball together year by year. But it's not too often do we see them on the floor at the same time. I wouldn't be surprised today, especially with the athletic ability, the explosiveness of Keita Richie Akabundu Ehioku. So, and they probably play together a little bit in conference yep. play, so it's good to get them in preseason to play together and, and get used to each other at, at the same time. Absolutely. There. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that tandem on the floor like they are now. Three ball goes up for Young Jr. It's tipped away, and Idehan fighting for the rebound. Loose ball on the floor. He comes away with it, finds so, and now they slow things down. Santa Barbara, this is the biggest deficit at home in the first half of the Gauchos this season. Sani went up for the shot. He drew Levi off the ground and a hard foul as both guards fall to the hardwood. Sonny Let's take got another look. kicked in the face as he came across. Watch this. Oh, man. Boom. Hard, hard fall for both players. Yeah. Levi bent over. Looks like both of them are okay. They're good to go. Another reason why you don't jump for fakes yep. on shots from the outside. But that brings Santa Barbara to their ninth foul drawn. They're in the bonus. One more would put them in the double bonus, and Sani has a one and one at the line. Yeah, that was a good offensive play by Sani. He just made a shot fake, and the guy took it and went up, went up uh, and came down on top of him. Uh-oh. And that free throw ends a three minute and 11 second scoring drought for Santa Barbara. They're one of their last seven field goals, 0 of five on their last five attempts, but they finally get a point to fall. Yeah, they've stalled out on their offense a little bit and the intensity is picked up by uh, UTA also. The handoff for Hoiberg, who's working it left. Boy, does this team move it around the perimeter well. Castro had a fadeaway look. Pierre Louis with the rebound. The outlet out to Mitchell. Idehan driving the lane. He'll get it to fall. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a fake uh, play by the, the UTA guard. He was, in other words, he was in the circle and he faked like a foul. And a flop, if you will, the coach. Flop, the flop is not allowed. We talked about how that would affect college basketball earlier on in the season, and we're somewhat seeing the effects now. The new rules put in place this season. Levi's tough to guard. Wow, a drive in the lane. Wilson just couldn't get it to fall. Here's Sani. Oh, he's denied. That ball on the floor, Wilson comes away with it. Azor across the midline, looking in for Castro. Castro backing down Pierre Louis, turns around with the right hook and drops it home. He's about three inches taller than, uh, than Josh Pierre Louis and, and he took advantage of his size there inside. UTA back on top. Shoot the ball. 
Mitchell working on the screen, looking in for Edehan, uses his muscle, goes up with it, and gets a friendly roll. Good pass from Mitchell. Talk about points in the paint early. Santa Barbara, and that's their bread and butter thus far. Levi working with two defenders on him. Crafty ball on a string, swings out for Azor. Three ball Castro, too strong. Rebound, that's from Young Jr. And they'll reset up, or try to reset up top. Oh man, that's off of Montez Young Jr. Gaucho's got a hand on it now with a chance to retake the lead. That's why you don't use a dribble pass in case the defense changes. That was a good play by Amadou So to jump out in the passing lane and create that turnover. Mitchell at the point. Robinson at the five spot. Santa Barbara with 14 of its 18 points coming from inside the key. Pierre Louis driving on the left side of the block. The rebound for Wilson. Levi lightning quick out to the corner. Three ball up and good. Carson Bischoff nails the triple. Great pass from Levi there to get the ball to the open man. As you can see, they're in a zone now because they're in foul trouble and their ball movement is pretty good by the Gauchos. Good open shot. Mitchell had the open look. It's Norris who comes away with the rebound. Long two. Can't get that to fall. Another opportunity. Wow. That's his second personal against Norris. Bill wow. Vinovich, yeah, it called it over the, yeah, over the yeah, back. Yeah, he didn't report it. He just called it. Here's Bischoff up top. Oh, looking for the back door for Wilson. He'll bank it off the glass with the lay-in. That screen and roll play is working well for UTA right out in front. Hard to help when it's in the middle of the court like that. Now Amadou So is back on the floor. He's leading the Gauchos in points and rebounds, eight and four. And double dribble called, turnover against So, point. Checking in for the Gauchos. Back to UT Arlington. Now the last time these two teams met, it was December 7th, 2019. Amadou So had 23 points with an eight of 10 on field goals. He nailed three three-pointers from downtown. And UT Arlington fell to the Gauchos at home. That was 72 to, 20, to, to 68. A real close game. I remember the game on the road. But the Mavericks looking for a redemption game here. Mitchell running the floor. He slows things down. Here's So working on Wilson. The finger roll, he'll lay it in. So. They're playing a zone. It's hard to help like you're doing a man-to-man. -man. And uh, Amadou had his way there on that drive. So 19th in the country in points per game. He's got 20.8 in each contest. They got Mitchell there on holding, coming around that screen. And back into this one, Keota Ritchie, Akabundu Ehioku comes back on in. This team, UT Arlington, 24th in the country in blocks per game. And Akabundu Ehioku last season, he was third all time in terms of a single season blocks mark for UT Arlington. Good defense by Josh Pierre-Louis that time. Castro lets it fly from downtown. He nails it. Castro. That's 10 on the night for Pedro Castro, the graduate out of Houston Baptist, a transfer. Castro the steal. Here he is on the other end. And a foul on the ground prior to the shot. Whistle blown against A.J. Mitchell. That's, that's his second. Sloppy turnover there by the Gauchos, uh, not acknowledging the defense of uh, UT Arlington. 
Castro playing strong basketball early on, four of seven on field goals with a pair of three-pointers. Mavericks on top by a pair of possessions looking to extend the lead to the largest it's been this evening. They've led since the 14-14 mark. Here's Hoiberg picked up by Wisher. Off the double screen, he works it right. That's a block from Wisher. Castro, it's out of bounds. It'll stick with the Mavs, 11 to shoot on the clock. Good defense by the Gauchos, both times uh, with Calvin and again on the sideline by Nagel. Hoiberg running the offense. Pulls it back, the shot long two is off the mark. Pierre Louis climbs the ladder for the rebound, running the floor. Nagel fakes the three, and they slow things down. Good transition defense. Wisher, wide open triple. Akabundu Ehioku with the rebound. Here comes Azor and the Mavericks. Azor with the jab, looking to create space. The spin, the lay-in, the foul, and one! David nice. Azor, what a play! Very nice spin dribble. He's a lefty, and he put it up with his favorite hand going that way, so good move. Very good. At the line for the Mavericks, number four, Azor. David Azor. He's been the rock for this squad. Now another graduate player on this team. They're incredibly experienced. He's a six foot four guard out of Houston, Texas, leading this team in scoring. He's shooting 83% from the stripe. And he'll knock down the shot to make it a three point play. With that free throw, Azor is now within four of becoming seventh all time in UTA program history and free throws made. Gaucho's in a little foul trouble now with a couple of their guys having two fouls. This zone has really, really... Free COVID, January 22nd, 2020, lost to Cal State Northridge, 83 to 75, but have won every game at the Thunderdome since then. Stepped out of bounds. Basketball goes back to the Gauchos as Wilson steps out of bounds. Another look at it here. Too good. much pressure by the Twin Towers. Good offensive rebound, though, and uh, I think the rebounds on the offensive end are about even now, six apiece. This is a good, active, uh, rebounding team. Now they're back into a 1-3-1 one, one zone with the big guy coming out there. Here's Pierre-Louis working against Levi. They work it inside for Robinson Day, and he's looking to go back door. That's Amadou So who comes away with it and lays it on in. He's up to 12 on the night. A little fortunate for the Gauchos there. Threw a pass that kind of got through all the way from uh, Robinson Day to uh, uh, Amadou So. Three ball, Azor. They've been shooting it well from downtown, just can't hit there. Idehan with the rejection. Castro, long two from the short corner. He drops it on home. And a technical foul goes against Castro here as he turned and looked to the bench after he made the shot. It's called malcontact. Um, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, it's not to be done, and it's good to get it stopped early. And, uh, you know, they watch the pro games and they learn a lot of stuff. Some of it's good, some of it's not. And that's one of the things it's not. When you, when you try to taunt the opposing team by looking at them after you make a shot, 
that is not good conduct on the basketball court. Sure, not good conduct, but he's having one of the best games, if not the best game of his season so far. He's at 12 tonight, that's Castro, as UC Santa Barbara misses on the first. A.J. Mitchell has a shot at the second free throw at the line, but that's 12 on the night for Castro. His season high is 17 against San Diego, UC, or SDSU. Mitchell missed on a pair of free throws right there, not quite like him. It will be Gaucho basketball, but hey, if you want to win tight games, those are shots you got to make right there. Those are free throws you have to knock you down. You got to knock them down. It's his first start as a, as a freshman. He's a, he's a little bit nervous, but uh, he'll come around. He'll come around. It's an 88% free throw shooter who missed a pair from the line. This zone has really clogged up the gotcha. Wisher triple. Yes, he got it. Back within two possessions. Levi looking to create space on Mitchell. He works on the screen. Back door for Wilson. It's poked away. UTA keeps it. Travel, not called. Levi driving in the lane. Gets the bank home. Very nice drive. Levi has been impressive. His first points tonight along with eight, pardon, five assists. Mitchell dumps it off, he damn slams it home. Nice pass to get that dunk. Young looking for any help here, trying to hand off for Levi. They find Wilson atop the key. Azor with five to shoot. Three ball up, off the mark. Here come the Gauchos. Wishart fakes on the triple, works it into the paint. A teardrop can't go. Don't halves and games. Bounce over to Azor on the left wing. Starters in for Arlington. Here's Levi. Euro step tries to get it around Wisher. Pierre Louis the rebound. Now he runs the floor. Swings it out. Wisher puts one up from downtown. Rebound for UT Arlington. Three seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. Levi controls pace. It's a tough one to guard when you're isolated out there. 10 on the shot clock. Here comes a screen and a roll. Two to shoot, long three Azor. Whistle blown and a foul goes against Wilson. Looks like So drew it, and since Santa Barbara in the double bonus, So heads to the line for two free throws upcoming at the end of the half here. Third personal. Santa Barbara's smothering defense on that possession. They worked it down to the final seconds and forced Azor to jack up a very long three from no man's land. And they got it out of Levi's hands, which was a good move. And because he's the one that's trying to create and get it to the open man. It was good defense by the Gauchos that last possession, yes. So hits on the first. The six foot nine forward out of Bamako Mali. He's an 83% free throw shooter. A, a guy who could really score at all levels. He's worked on that over his career at Santa Barbara. Averaging 21 points per game this season. That's the best mark of his career. Yes, he has. He's worked very hard at improving not only his scoring and free throwing, but rebounding. And we'll see how this one turns out. We're underway here in the second half. We're out of the break. UC Santa Barbara has an opportunity for their first lead since the 14-minute mark in the first half. Sonny, open look, pulls back the arrow, can't hit. Good open shot, though. 
Keanu Reeves, Yakubundu, Ehioku. Oh my goodness, an alley-oop! Starting in the second half. Wow, what a play. He comes up and hammers it home. And Levi gave it to, I call him, TKO. TKO, <laughs> he not, he's a knockout coach. Reach and fail called. This one goes against Javon Levi. Yeah, he gambled on that a little bit and did foul him. Levi is one of four active graduates on this UTA roster. They all play big high minute games, high volume. Oh, a, a steal from Levi. They send it in the other direction, work in the post, and a lot of contact. The foul will go against Santa Barbara to send Azor to the stripe. Yeah, uh, too bad. It was a good drive by Josh Pierre-Louis, but he did a one-hand gotcha. dribble pass, and the defense has changed so quickly. You can't dribble pass it in against a good defense, and that was the turnover. Talk about starting high. Arlington, they didn't just work well in the first half. They come out in the second half, make a statement on their first possession with the alley-oop. Azor then with the steal, and they push it in the other direction. Here he is at the stripe. He's 83% from the line this season. Misses on the first. Azor, the only player for the Mavericks that's been at the line tonight. He hits one of two. A little pressure in the backcourt by their starting point guard. Tries to stay in front of them. A good challenge for the young freshman, A.J. Mitchell. Only going to make him better. Yep. Boy, Arlington playing smothering, deny defense. So takes it himself. Blocking foul. He'll draw two shots at the line. Tons of contact in the post. Yep. Uh, that was all. Uh, three guys went down on that one. One, two, three. And only one of them was really hit. Second personal, second team foul. Yeah, talk about Thanksgiving. Those three Arlington players just gobbling up Amadou So. Tons of contact in the post. It sends him to the line. So is two for three from the charity stripe tonight. Looking for point 15 and 16. Oops. So miss on the first for Amadou So. This is a Gaucho team that typically really good at shooting those free throws. Those are free points. And a big reason why they won the last time these two teams met. In the second half, back in 2019, they shot 14 of 17 in the second half from the free throw line. But So misses a pair right there. Just uncharacteristic of this Gaucho team. They are now six for 12 in free throws. Not to mention, it's a home game. And Amadou was shooting 80% until then. Castro with the fadeaway jumper. The lead back up to seven. This is tied for the longest of the night for either squad. Sunny tries to dump it off. So once again, triple teamed in the post. He forces it up, can't get it to fall. Azor. Driving, A.J. Mitchell picks him up. Levi steps into one, drives, can't knock it down. Oh. Just an errant shot. Gauchos have to come up with some of those errant shot rebounds. Those 50-50 balls are all going to the team that's going after it. Contact on Mitchell, foul goes against the Gauchos. Two shots coming for Javon Levi. He's tough to guard, so quick. That is A.J. Mitchell's fourth personal foul against him. Folks, a reminder, at college basketball, you foul out with five in a game. So this might be the last time we see A.J. Mitchell for maybe 10 minutes heading in to the final stretch of this one. Levi's first free throw rolls out. Wishart and E. Dayhan onto the floor as Mitchell and Norris checking on out. Yeah, tough, tough uh, guard for him. 
starting your first game and you got to play against a, a guy that's super, super quick and can really drive the ball, who's a graduate student. Yeah, <laughs> Javon Levi, boy, is he just a polished player. Plays with the ball on his string, third in the country among active Division I players in assists. He's six in steals and he gets one there. Two Gauchos had the ball and uh, it got away from him. Levi directing traffic atop the logo. UTA almost loses it. Edehan skies in and a foul called. Whistle blown against Abadou So, the third team foul of the half, his first against him. Wamba at the line. At the line for the Mavericks, number 23, Patrick Wamba. First up and good. Entering the game for the Gauchos, number four, Cole. Anderson checks on in for Jari Sani. Largest lead of the night for UT Arlington. They're up by eight. And the pair sunk. Gauchos looking to break the full court press. There's hands on him. They don't call that, they should be. Looking for the back door and you see Santa Barbara loses it. Pierre Louis couldn't come away. So tries to step in front of it, loses the interception and Arlington able to reset. That screen and roll at the top to initiate their, their offense has hurt the Gauchos. Here's Castro, pulls it back for Wamba, fakes right, goes left, Castro triple up. It's short, so his rebound, the fifth of the night. Anderson worked it inside, tried to dump it off. The foul goes against the blue. That is number 23, Patrick Wamba whistled for the foul. Three team fouls apiece in the second half. Ball will go out of bounds until they get to seven, unless it's a shooting foul. Amadou So checks on out here on the floor for the Gauchos. Josh Pierre-Louis, Miles Norris, Calvin Wisher, Cole Anderson, and Robinson E. Dahan. Anderson left wide open. Too bad, good shot. And a steal from Azor, he pushes tempo. Azor swings out for Hoiberg, who steps in. Two up, no good, Edehan climbs the ladder for the board. Wisher, nice move, misdirection, a bank home. He, he ball faked it to uh, to Cole Anderson and, and made a good layup. Azor falls away and gets the basket. David Azor putting on a show here in the second half. Playing strong basketball, he's up to six. Anderson working off the screen, right back up top for Wishart, they reset. Wisher couldn't get that to fall. Good drive, just not a good finishing shot. Here's Wilson backing down Edehan. Able to hit one of two, they're up to 10 for that lead, largest of the night. Man to man defense. So coach, if you you find yourself down by 10, first lead of, you know, of the season for an opposing team in the Thunderdome, how do you calm your team and their nerves? Good, good rebound. You, what you have to do is you have to rebound, you have to pass and catch, and you've got to get back to a positive attitude on the offensive end. 
Got to make sure that your team has high morale. That's the focus for Coach Joe Pasternak in Santa Barbara. As for UT Arlington, what is Coach Greg Young telling his team at the break right there? Continue to do what you've been doing because it's a winning formula. Azor with two to shoot. He lets it fly. And they lose the basketball, Pierre. Louis couldn't grab the rebound. An opportunity for a shot clock reset. Wilson short corner jumper. This time, Pierre Louis able to snag it. So wide open for the lane. Good pass from uh, Josh Pierre Louis. They got to get a spark going on offense. Santa Barbara with a 4 0 run out of the break here. Boyberg moves it right. Here's Wilson. Wilson backs down so he goes straight up. Almost throws that away. Two to shoot. Hoiberg hoists one up. And a foul called against Wishart on a last second attempt. Unbelievable. Just too much contact and three shots coming for Hoiberg. Not a good decision by Calvin Wishart, obviously to slap and try and block a shot at the end of a possession. I don't know what he's thinking or if he's thinking. Jack Hoiberg, a 71% free throw shooter. And Wishart whistled for the foul. Gaucho foul, number 10, Calvin Wishart. First personal, 15 foul. Santa Barbara with a great defensive possession, but they just let it go to waste there as Hoiberg draws contact on the three-point attempt. So here is his first of three shots at the line. He knocks it down. Yeah, he's a really good shooter, a lefty, and uh, he's the one that nails threes for him pretty regularly. They've kept him in check pretty good uh, tonight. Three in for UT Arlington. Starters on the floor, other than Hoiberg, it's Hoiberg in for Levi right now, shooting the free throw. Three up, three in for Jack Hoiberg. This lead balloons back up to nine. Santa Barbara has a ways to go. Pierre-Louis takes it himself. That's a rejection. Akabuntu Ehioku sends it back. A good ball fake would have uh, been worth uh, a foul and a bucket, maybe. Wamba working baseline against Pierre-Louis. Azor up top. We got to talk. Good pass inside and the layup from Wamba. Good offense by uh, UT Arlington. Got Wishard the has the open, the open three, draws contact and the foul. Yeah. A flop called on Calvin Wishard. Good, good, basket. good call. The basket there. counts. Good call. Wishard. Coach, walk me through it there. Well, it's, he, he's faked the fall, and you, you cannot flop in front of good officials. They'll call it every time. And he didn't need to do that because he made the shot, and he wasn't fouled. <laughs> Trying to get some retaliation for the play just a minute ago on Jack Hoiberg. Castro swings it left. Three ball from Wamba. Oh. He retaliates on the other end. Arlington nails the triple up 11. Santa Barbara might have met its match. Norris lets one go. The rebound for the Mavericks. The drive Azor can't get the teardrop to fall. So comes away with the rebound. Wisher. We're going to pull it back for years ago. Got to pick it up at both ends, the defense and the offense. 
There's still a lot of time. They can still get it done. There's a nice 2-2 two -two time at the post. St. Coutore on the left wing. They're looking to force it into the block for So, who gets double teamed every time he touches the basketball. There's the double team. So has to jack one up. It's off the top of the backboard. And a shot clock violation after the break. Coach, you have a chance to talk to your team to try and calm down nerves. And Arlington comes out hot-headed on the defensive end. They did a good job on that possession. And and uh, Amadou got stuck late in the possession, trying to drive the ball into the middle. Arlington looking to extend the lead here, already up by double figures. Castro's been on fire, can't hit. Sani able to climb for the rebound. Now pushing tempo. Wisher draws the contact around the perimeter on the dribble drive. It's Levi who's whistled for the foul. That was a good drive by Cal and a nice pass, but they fouled him on the pass. Mitchell back in with four personal fouls. to give the freshman a chance to play the last 10 minutes if he can play without fouling. Mitchell has an opportunity to finish out this game, but only has one foul to spare. Wishard steps to the right, three ball up, no good. Here is Azor, who skies for the board, and UT Arlington once again an opportunity to extend the lead. Wamba fakes on the three, drops down the shoulder. Twelve to shoot. Wisher picks his pocket, takes it in the other direction, one on one, contact, foul, and one. He drops it home. That was a mishandle by Levi, and a, there was Wishart to get that nice driving lap. Fourth personal, 16 foul. Santa Barbara cuts the lead back to single digits. Wisher at the line. Might be the best game of the season for Calvin Wisher. Four fouls quickly on Levi, who is their starting point guard. So you saw both point guards now in foul trouble. A.J. Mitchell, he received his fourth foul with the 17-minute mark left here in the second half. And as for Javon Levi, he receives his fourth foul with the 10-minute mark here in the second half. Yep, he should have stayed away that time. I mean, it was a clear layup, and he... He got involved and shouldn't have. Another missed free throw. This time it's Calvin Wishard who couldn't get it to fall. Hoiberg swings right. Azor driving the lane against Mitchell. It's Wishard who gets the board. Sunny fakes the three, short two, can't bank it home. The Dehan got the rebound, it's knocked out of bounds. They're on the same team. Yep. It's just a miscommunication. Yep. Miles uh, Norris was going for the ball and Dehan had it, and he knocked it out of his hands. Hoiberg, smart play, knows Mitchell, already has four fouls. That one goes against E. Dayhan. Heads up basketball, six, coach. You look at this again. Yep. And uh, not a good jump stop, actually, by Horberg. He did travel on that jump stop, but he did get fouled. And he hits on the first. Hoiberg with four points tonight, all of which have come from the stripe. Yeah, he's a really good shooter. There's no question about that. Both teams shooting about 40% from the field tonight. This is a zone now. They did this in the first half. They ran man to man until they got into a zone and the Gachos didn't do much against the zone. Backdoor for Norris, that's a rejection, but a foul. It'll send two shots to the line. 
Norris has a pair coming. This one goes against Kyoto Richie Akabundu and Yoku. A TKO again. Very active player. <laughs> and you see how explosive he is in the lane. A denier, if you will. It's really difficult to, to get a step on that young man. Well, he's 6'9 or 10, and he jumps well. But that's his fourth personal foul as well. And that's the first point for Norris in this game. Norris, his first free throw. First of the free throw. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Pierre Louis checks on in. If you're an active offensive player and you're taking your first free throw with less than 10 minutes to go in the game, you know you haven't been active like you should be. The physical presence hasn't been there for the Gauchos. And when they have gotten the ball inside, they've hit 8 of 15 from the strike. Bischoff on the right wing. They move it left. Here's Azor. On the floor for Arlington, Azor, Wamba. And that's Wamba who knocks the three up but can't get it to fall. Good contesting by Edehan that time. Norris fires left. Sunny driving baseline, tries to dump off. This one picked away. Here comes Azor. And a foul on the floor against Josh Pierre-Louis, his first personal of the night. Gotcha foul number two, Josh Pierre-Louis. First I think Sonny misread that play a little bit. He, I, he thinks he thought he had an open pass to him, and he, and he did. Back in for the so back to who's on the floor so for UT Arlington, Azor, Wamba, Castro. You also see Hoiberg and Bischoff in the backcourt. As for the Gauchos, it's A.J. Mitchell along with Calvin Wisher, Josh Pierre-Louis, Miles Norris, and Amadou So. David Azor hits on the first of a one and one. He has seven points tonight, just two of 10 from the field, but able to draw those trips to the line to get him in on the scoring action. UT Arlington is playing very well, consistent, playing hard on defense. And you got to give them some credit for the shooting, the poor shooting of the Gauchos. But in all honesty, they've had good shots. They just haven't been able to make them. Offense against the zone again here. Santa Barbara really having trouble breaking this zone. Mitchell works it in for So, who tries with the right, and he'll muscle it home. That's, that's a good zone buster there if you can get it into him against that zone. So up to 18 on the night. He's 8 of 11 on shots. Hoiberg with the step back, moves it for Wamba. That's a three. Wishart with the rebound. The outlet here for Pierre-Louis. Cross court, he nearly throws it away, and he does. Does throw it away, yeah. Azor with a tremendous hand in the lane. Here's Hoiberg across the timeline. That's the 14th turnover for the Gauchos. Hoiberg takes it to the hole himself. Check. UT Arlington suffered a loss to San Diego State just a couple of games ago, 68 to 62, as So works at any point play. Very unusual because he's at 82% going into the game. The last time these two teams played, a big reason why the Gauchos won the game was because of the free throws in the second half. They hit 14 of 17. This time, it's Arlington who's been hitting free throws on the road. And that play has hurt them, that screen and roll. The Gauchos are hedging it, and nobody's helping on the over-the-top pass. Can't hit on the three. It's Wamba the rebound. An 11-point lead. Yeah, they've outscored them 26 to 17 in the second half. Santa Barbara also 2 of 11 from downtown. Azor, the long two, he sticks it. Up 13 here, the largest lead of the night. 
Dump off for Amadou So, can't get it to fall. There's Pierre-Louis, second chance. Tons of contact in the post. Two more shots for Pierre-Louis. Coach, if you're, you know, if you're Greg Young of the Mavericks, you gotta be telling your, your forwards in the post, foul them. They're not hitting their free throws. <laughs> make their, their lives as tough as you can possibly make them. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's been the mentality. Well, they're, they're playing aggressively, and I think if you play aggressive, you're gonna foul once in a while, especially on the boards. But I, I think the main thing is with the, uh, with the Texas team now, they're, they're ahead by enough that they could win the game with six minutes to go. If they uh, stretch the possessions, if they take care of the ball and take good shots, that's basically what they have to do. Pierre-Louis goes one for two. That's the theme of the night. Gaucho shooting just 53% on free throws. Here is Arlington up 12. Boyberg picked up by Wershirt, working off the screen. There was space, they work it in for Wilson. Three to shoot, two to shoot. Azor gets it off in time. And the rebound, Dehan. Just over five to play. Sunny drives. Looks like that's a charging foul, no? Yep. Ball headed in the other direction. Sani couldn't slow himself down. Another look at it here. Wilson steps in front. You heard the, the, the wail of the crowd. They thought the point would fall. Well, in fact, it actually goes back to Arlington. Yep, and uh, that's a, you gotta read the defense. Somebody's in front of you. You gotta recognize it. And you gotta pull up and shoot the jump shot. A correction on the score here, 61-49. There we go. Oh, bad pass. And Azor throws it away with five to play. That's five sharp on the game clock. That play has hurt the, the, the Gauchos, though. When they screen on top and roll, the Gauchos have been hedging it, and then they've been getting it to the roll man. That time the pass was just... An errant pass, not a good pass. Now Sani is out. He too has four fouls along with A.J. Mitchell. Both of those guards, the, both of those starting guards combined for two points, 0 of 9 from the field. Norris wow. he draws the contact on the jumper. The 10-footer brings Miles Norris to the line for two free throws. The 10th foul for the Arlington team. The, the more aggressive team is making fouls, but yet they are still ahead 12 points. That is 22 team fouls in this game for UT Arlington. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Norris can't hit on the first free throw. This has got to be one of the worst free throw shooting performances we've seen for a Gaucho team in recent memory. Yep, and a good, they're, they're a good shooting team, good free throw team, and they uh, can't seem to get it done tonight. They've missed 10 tonight, missed 10 free throws, and they're down by 11. That's yep. the deficit, coach. Yep, Gaucho's trapping now a little bit in the backcourt, and they're going to give up layups if they don't get back. Good, good play there. There's Castro turning around, fading away. Can't get it to fall, it's batted out. It stays with the Mavericks. Edehan just couldn't get a clean catch. Nope. I think Edehan had that rebound. I don't know that he was fouled, but. Good offense from Montez Young Jr. Here's Mitchell, down 13, they need magic. Mitchell tries oh. to dump it off, it's out, it'll stay with the Gauchos. It was a good idea, it was just a little too hard for Edehan, who was just four feet away from him. All of these things will build up for A.J. Mitchell and he's gonna, he's gonna learn a lot from this game, his first starting game as a college basketball player. Mitchell inbound finds Wisher. 
Oh. The work inside for Edehan and a whistle blown. That goes against Wilson, and it will be the fourth player for UT Arlington with four fouls. If Santa Barbara somehow, someway gets back in this game, you have to believe that that foul trouble is going to catch up for UT Arlington, especially because three of those four players are starters. Yes, and, and uh, they're aggressive, and they're making the fouls. I mean, it's not like the officials are, are uh, looking for it. They're making them, and the uh, Gauchos are not making their free throws or making three-point plays off of made baskets. So one of those nights where nothing nothing the Gauchos do is, seems to be right. Dehan hits on the second. Hoiberg really pushing tempo. You, you can see him turn on the Jets to get across to break the press. And with that, now Arlington able to run about 20 seconds off the clock if they hold for this possession. This is a good possession for them because they're running the clock down. Hoiberg takes it inside, fired sure. it around. Now Norris gets the ball, outlet for Sunni. He dumps it up, Ede Head throws it down, hammered, jammered. 40, full court defense by the Gauchos. They've got to get some turnovers and some buckets. Levi in the trap. Starting point guard back in, Levi, quick, what? good good in the backcourt, good against the press. He's one of four players on the team with four fouls. Three of those will call hands on the body. So a one and one, he misses the first. Down Jones looking to make it a one, a single digit deficit. There's so in the block, it's tipped away. Azor with the steal. They clumped down on him from the backside and knocked it away as he turned into him. Good play by Texas Arlington on the defense. An offensive foul called. It goes against David Azor, his third personal. Third personal. Azor tried to uh, do the NBA flop and look at the official type thing. Norris lets it fly. Off the front iron, he skies in for the board, but Azor is there. 10 point deficit, 230 to play. Wisher picks his pocket, here come the Gauchos in the other direction. So with nobody around him, he knocks it down from downtown. Back to a seven point lead. Timeout taken by UT Arlington. Timeout taken by the members. Cole Anderson's coming in right now. He is a very capable shooter, but he's a freshman and he hasn't had that much playing time, but he can really shoot it. And uh, maybe he can nail a couple threes. So that is a 30-second timeout here. Arlington has two left. Both both teams with two timeouts left. Now Santa Barbara, you look at Amadou So, he's leading the charge, 23 points, has made 10 field goals tonight. So is averaging 21 points per game. The last time these two teams met back in December of 2019, So had 23 points, 10 rebounds, and a win. It was a four-point win. And what was key down the stretch, we mentioned it time and time again, hitting those free throws. Tonight, yeah. the Gauchos have not been able to hit those free throws. They have to hit their shots. Right, and uh, free throws have hurt them, 11 for 22. 50% from the free throw line is obviously not very good. Arlington to inbound from the sideline in front of the scorer's table. That is Pedro Castro at the controls. They're looking to get the ball in for Levi, who will make his way up the floor. Picked up by A.J. Mitchell, who has four fouls against him. Two minutes to play. Seven-point deficit. Will the Gauchos lose their first in the Thunderdome this season? Here's Azor backing down Pierre-Louis. He falls away. Can't get it to roll in. Wisher comes away with the rebound. The push-up for Pierre-Louis. Up and under. Can't get it to come home. Norris there for the putback. It's cut to five. 
defense now, five point game. 130 to play. 90 ticks left on the game clock. Here is Levi. Azor trying to draw contact. Six, now five to shoot. Azor drives. He loses the basketball. Here come the Gauchos. Wisher. So, it's knocked out of bounds. It'll go back to Arlington. Too bad, that was a, a chance to get to the hoop and maybe get fouled. Five point game with one minute. That was a big possession for the Gauchos to try and get a score and pull this within one possession. Right now it's two possessions. Full court pressure by the Gauchos. A five point basketball game with 60 seconds to play. This one's gonna come down to free throws, no doubt. Just a question of when we get to that mark. Now they'll hold it out now with this much time. They'll hold it out. Gotta go get it, Gauchos. Azor with 10 points tonight, the leading scorer on the season. And a whistle blown against Amadou So sends David Azor to the line. He's four of five tonight. He has two shots coming on the shooting foul. Gaucho foul. Azor seems to be their man, the guy that had the ball, uh, three of the last four possessions. And uh, two of those three times until this one, he has made uh, turnovers or mistakes. But now, Makes a, if he makes the free throws, it kind of puts it out of uh, out of range. David Azor, a preseason second team all Sun Belt Conference player. Right now, he's eighth all time in free throws made for any player in UT Arlington history. With this free throw right here, he needs one more make to tie Eddie Stallings of the 67 and 69 team from 1967 to 69 with 297 free throws. He can't hit right there. He's looking to move into seventh all time. That's good. Keep keep talking about those made free throws. Uh, I think you got the announcer's uh, stuff on him right there. <laughs> <laughs> so he has one here to make it a six-point basketball game. Still within reach, very much so, for UC Santa Barbara. But they have to come away with the rebound here. And Azor looks to knock this one down. He one does two. just that. Six point game, two possessions. Give it to Josh. Go. Five. So, with that free throw, David Azor is now seventh all time in free throws made in UT Arlington history. It's a six point basketball game. Pierre Louis fires back out for So, who fakes on a couple of three pointers. Teardrop can't fall. Too bad. Good shot. The foul against So. Yeah, that one had to go for him if they were going to get back for the next possession. Pretty good shot, though. He got it into the paint and had a little eight footer or so. Texas Arlington deserves this, uh, this victory. They've done a great job statistically and hustling for the loose balls. They've come up with more 50-50 balls. Lowest point total of the season for the Gauchos as Hoiberg hits his sixth. He's 100% from the strength tonight. Now a three possession basketball game. Two for two for Hoiberg. That lead back up to eight. Pierre-Louis pushing tempo. He gets it to fall. 68 to 60 with 15 seconds to play. Mitchell jacks one up, it's off the mark and that should just about do it. Castro fouled with under 10 seconds to go. And Santa Barbara has all but lost its handle on UT Arlington. How about the Mavericks? What a game tonight for Pedro Castro, David Azor and this Mavericks team. This is a physical win, a gritty win, a very strong performance from the free throw line. 
They shot 17 from 23 from the stripe this evening as the Gauchos held to 50% on 22 free throws. Yep. That's the that's the L. That's the loss as this this deficit is now at 9. If if Castro knocks down this next free throw, it'll be at 10 and hey, 11 free throws missed for the Gauchos. That's your deficit. That's your loss. Well, you're never going to make all your free throws, but there, there are some other things that didn't go right for the Gauchos, too. The three of the starters just didn't get it going to go tonight, and um, they will. They have been, and they will again, but uh, not tonight. It wasn't a good game for, for three of them. Anderson steps into the short corner, too, and drills it. Oh, Anderson. That's a case of too little, too late. 